All right, let's talk about Matt Corral, the guy who I was very high on. He was my quarterback, too, in this draft class. And I got to say, I was maybe a little disappointed in his first preseason performance. He wasn't awful. He did some things that I liked, some things he has to improve upon. That's what the preseason is all about, right? Figuring out what you got to improve upon and improving upon those things. So let's talk about the good and the bad we saw from Matt Corral in his first game in an NFL uniform, starting off with this play. So this is going to be a man coverage play. It's a cover one play and it's a third down and six. So ideally, I think the read is actually pretty clear, but it's still for a young quarterback. You want them to get the good reads. I think just looking at the matchup right here, looking at the setup right here, the guy you probably want to throw to is going to be to your left if you're Matt Corral. That's towards the bottom of the screen because there is only going to be one safety deep. You don't know that necessarily. There could be a disguise and someone else is going to drop back, but they're kind of showing as though it's one safety deep. And if it's going to be two safeties, the safety who's over the middle of the field is still far enough away that you'll have room. It'll still be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on that side of the field. And there's only one eligible receiver other than the halfback on that side of the field. The other side of the ball has, you know, two wide receivers and a tight end in that area. So as you see, Matt Corral takes a snap. He looks in the correct direction, makes a throw, and it's a good play by the receiver. You look at how he was able to sort of get the leverage to where he's closer to the ball than the defensive back is. So that's obviously good, but it works together, right? Yes, the receiver had to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. If he wasn't able to win, none of this matters, but you have to give credit to Corral for putting his players in the best position to succeed and throwing a guy the ball when he was in the best situation available. As you see, it is a catch. It was a good throw as well, but I really just like the pre-snap read more than anything, and that's something that I thought that Corral did a good job of. He was good at it in college and continues to be good at it, I would say, here in the preseason. I think that that was a, a positive in his game. Something like this is another example where it, this is kind of what his MO was in college of finding these soft spots in zone coverage. Going to be a quick route over the middle. And with this cover three zone, you see how there can be a gap in coverage where Corral can want to make this throw. Like, watch, Corral takes the snap, and you'll see it a little bit better at this point. You see where there's that window? You see the receiver's going to go in that direction, so that's when Corral's going to have to make the throw. This is less about, you know, accuracy, speed, all that stuff is still important, but timing is just as important as those other qualities here, whereas on some other routes, it's not as important. However, Corral times it up perfectly, good, at, very well accurate, uh, you know, maybe could have been a little bit lower, but that's still a catch you got to make, I would say, uh, you know, receiver took a big hit, that's obviously not great, but that was kind of more due to the fumble, uh, or, you know, bobbling of the ball, I should say, so to me, I would consider that a good play, even if it didn't work out. Going over to some negatives, Corral has that thing that just a lot of young quarterbacks have of got to learn to get rid of the football. I paused it right here. Uh, this is really just a clear example of at a certain point, you do have to get rid of the football, whether it's throwing the ball away, even taking a sack sometimes. You got to just make a decision. Plays do not last forever. Watch how when Corral takes the snap. So we're first going to get about, you know, uh, roughly five seconds into the play now at this point uh, where, you know, that's an eternity in a football play. That's about twice as long as a typical play would take. Corral then tries to get outside the pocket to make something else happen. By the time he finally makes the throw, he gets brought down, cannot even get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. So, you know, not ideal. You want to make your decisions happen quicker. And this isn't one isolated incident. If it was, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But this was something I saw happening a lot with Corral. Like this one's going to be another example of kind of a, a very similar thing of just, you know, you got to get rid of the ball quickly. This was in that, you know, two minute drive where the last thing you want is a sack here. Although, you know, it's third and 10. So you really do have to maybe take a chance or two. But again, this is something I kind of saw persistently was, I guess, two things. The first of which was, you know, holding on to the ball for too long. But the second of which is what we're also going to see on this play. Look, so you see that there's a blitz. Corral tries to get out of it instead of getting rid of the ball, which maybe he had to do. But then he throws the ball and, you know, that could have been a fumble. It's instead, you know, uh, to me, clear intentional grounding. Uh, there was a penalty on Washington on that play. So, you know, Carolina actually got the first down there. But the whole point is that that's just not something that, you know, not a great play. Now, again, could he have gotten rid of the ball quicker? I really don't know because I can't see what's on, you know, further down the field. Maybe he felt it was a risk worth taking given the game situation. Sure, that's fine. But, you know, just take the sack at that point. You don't have to. You're not going to. Nothing's going to work out when you put the ball in your left hand while you're getting tackled. That's just not going to help you out that much. Take the sack. 
you at least will live to see another day. It's only going to do bad stuff for you. And it, it's just stuff he has to learn. And finally, uh, there were some accuracy issues. Like, you know, again, the running the offense aspect I thought was good. He did miss some throws, which I don't remember being a big problem in college. So maybe I don't care too much. But, you know, again, I'm saying what I saw on his tape on his roughly 20 snaps we saw of him where, you know, there were a couple that he missed some throws. This is going to be one of them where you see the route on the screen. It's a good route against this type of coverage. Again, similar to the first play I showed you with just a single safety deep. You want to work towards the sidelines. The other receiver in that area will kind of be clearing out of that area. So it will turn into a one-on-one -on -one matchup. As you notice, Corral takes the snap. He's going to get ready to fire one, right one. The, you know, his receiver that he's trying to throw to is cutting. So this is a play that, you know, this should work. However, his throw was just a bit high. Maybe still could have been caught. It was also defended nicely by 16 for Washington. So several things at play there. Again, it's football. No one play is, you know, if, if, if we're only talking about 21 snaps, we're not going to get too many examples of plays that were definitively just good or bad from Corral. But I would still say that there was, you know, uh, not the most accurate throw there. So yeah, I didn't think his accuracy was all over the place. Like I said, it's not something that I've noticed a big chunk in his career, but you know, missed a couple throws in this game. If you want to look at his pro football focus grade, they were not too impressed with him. A 47.1 total offensive grade. It was largely due to the, the passing grade, which was right around there. Running grade was a little bit better. Uh, so I guess you have, you have that going for you, but you know, as a whole, eh, there's there could have been more value added. I think in this game, it was definitely a he needs he has some work, and you know, real, reality is he played like a mid round pick, which is what he was. So, how strong should we take away any of this stuff from Matt Corral? Maybe not very strongly at all. I mean, you know, it is just a preseason game, and we saw about twenty snaps. Uh, but you know, I think it's fair to say that. If he killed it and was awesome, we probably would all be saying, well, yeah, he was great, but he it was against weak competition. So I would say it's disappointing for him to not perform well, or in my opinion, did not perform too well in his first preseason game. And there is some evidence to back up. If you struggle in preseason, you will struggle in the regular season. Now, there isn't really strong evidence to support that if you're good in the preseason, you'll be good in the regular season. That tends to show no, uh, doesn't show us much, but it is a bad thing if you are negative, if that makes sense. So the advantage of being positive is you at least weren't negative there. Um, so with that being said, I think that for someone like a Matt Corral, uh, you know, it's a disappointing game, but at the same time, it's one preseason game. He'll have more of a sample size later on in future preseason games to, I think, perform better. But as it stands right now, whereas I thought when they drafted him, he might be a starter and might get some significant playing time. I actually thought this was a good situation for him simply because he would get playing time. Seems like that might not be the case. If you asked me, I'd probably go Baker Mayfield is the starter at this point from what I've seen, not just in preseason, but also just as a whole body of work. I would make Mayfield a starter. Matt Corral and Darnold would probably be competing for the backup. I don't think either one has clearly stated whether they should be the backup or the third stringer yet. So let them continue to compete. But that's kind of where I would have all this stuff. But where would you have it? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always... Thanks for watching.